pat yourself on the back because you are right here right now for a reason. Welcome to the On Purpose Podcast, where together we will empower ourselves and others to live lives with more passion and purpose. How are you doing this morning, Jared? I'm fantastic, my friend. How are you? Fantastic as well, man. Ready to get the week going. Yeah, I'm coming up on, uh, shoot, the last week of February. We're going to be almost through the first quarter of 2020. I know. It's already going by fast. I know. Thank goodness, because I'm ready to get winter over with. Yeah, you know what else is going by fast? The On Purpose Podcast, ah. baby, episode number 50, five zero. Huge thank you to all of our community tuning in every week. Uh, we couldn't do it without you guys and really appreciate it. It's uh, definitely a milestone for us, so yeah. we're excited. It's funny to reflect back on one meeting at Who Hut and just a crazy idea that we could make this work, and here we are almost a year later. The community is growing with each and every episode, and uh, it's just fun to be able to give back it is and interviewing guests man i'm so excited for the guest episodes we have planned yeah no it's fun just to help people realize their story is important to other people Mm -hmm. you know and it's just crazy you and i are both are pretty loud in life and um i love being able to share our outgoingness with people that are maybe a little more reserved to help them understand their story is important Mm-hmm. And it deserves to be told like everybody's story does. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited <laughs> for that. Me too, man. Me too. So last week we had, what does legacy mean? Yep. How were your reflections with your purposeful practice with that one? Um, you know, legacy for me is something I, I see every day cause in, in the uh, role of my parenting. You know what I mean? I get to see what I'm creating in the future through my kids every day. So it's, it's been fun to, you, you know, I had a couple conversations where people were like, Oh, you know, Trey's dad does this. So they assume Trey's going to do that. And it, w- it was nice that those assumptions are in positive lights. And it, it made me really think about, you know, making sure that the things I do on a daily basis reflect opportunity for them as well. Mm-hmm. You know, cause it's easy to, to live in your past and think, well, I accomplished this, so now I don't have to do as much now. But the reality is your legacy still being built. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big reflection for me too is that legacy building is daily, mm-hmm. that all of your actions, how you show up each and every day is contributing to your legacy. And just because you have an established legacy already doesn't mean that your current and future actions won't change that. Yeah. So it's always, it's, it's this continuously malleable thing, your legacy. So we got to we gotta show up every yeah, day. and I, I think that was the thing I kind of came up with <clears throat> thinking is there's, there's the legacy that most people think about, and that's after somebody passes. Mm-hmm. Then I think there's also your living legacy. Mm-hmm. Like what are you doing while you're alive? Yeah. And, and that puts the onus on your day-to-day actions. Is that a name of a band? Living, living legacy? legacy? I don't know. It sounds like a Bon Jovi song. I don't know. It sounds like a good band name, I don't even know man. who Bon Jovi is. Dude, dude come on now. <laughs> come on, Bon Jovi. Come on. Wow. Living on a prayer? All right. You don't want right. to see me karaoke that. <laughs> Actually, you do want to see me karaoke that. <laughs> all right. Well, good one. I'm glad you know who Bon Jovi is. Yeah, man. Come on. So, episode 50. This one, (laughs) this is something that I can learn from a little bit. The art of losing badly. Yeah. So, Jared, I mean, you you as as a coach, as a mentor to many, you've dealt with a lot of winners, a lot of losers. So tell me, why do you think losing is important in life? I I think it's timely, right? Like for us right now, we're at state wrestling season for high school. Uh, March is coming up around the corner, so you have March Madness for all the basketball fans, the NCAA wrestling, and you're going to see people's dreams of being national champions or state champions, regional, whatever, you're going to see them get crushed, you know, because they're going to lose. And, and only one kid and one, one competitor in every bracket gets to be the champion. That means everybody else has to deal with losing, so I think that's why it's so important to lose and to lose often in places in life is so you learn how to handle it. Uh, I think one of the biggest downfalls that we're doing to children in, in the recent years is insulating them from losing, taking away keeping scores of games and 
and having everybody be winners because that's not how life's going to treat them. And, and I think there's certain lessons you can only learn that you can only learn when you lose. Right? You, you take accountability or do you not? Like when you win, it's easy to, you know, if you're to start, it's easy to be a star. It's easy to celebrate with your teammates. But when you lose, do you take ownership of that or do you blame everybody else? Is it the coach's fault? Is it the ref's fault? Or did you make a mistake? Do you need to, to refine something? Do you need to practice harder? Do you need to practice differently? And, and that doesn't come on the heels of winning. That comes when you're exposed and you come up short. And the reality is, as you move into life, and we look back, or move into adult life, and we look back, like for me, I don't remember all the stuff I won, but I distinctly remember those losses that put me on a different path because I had to make changes. And I think that's, the sooner we can teach our kids that losing is okay, that you shouldn't like it, don't, don't get me wrong, you should never like losing, but it's going to happen, and it's what you do after you lose that's truly important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think for me the thing that you said that most resonated was ownership and responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I immediately thought back to when I was a high school wrestler and football player, a high school athlete, even middle school too. Uh, as a young man, I had a hard time taking ownership and responsibility. I always looked at something that I could blame it on because nobody wants to own losing, right? That You, you don't yeah. want that to be yours. You don't want that to be your identity. But I think when we do take ownership and responsibility, that's when the growth happens of 100% taking that. And that's why I love single sports wrestling. It wasn't until I got to wrestling that it was hard to, yeah. to point fingers to anybody else. You know, it's it's you and the other person. You, you can say stuff about the ref, but right. yeah, so, I, so for me, I think, I think losing is important because it makes winning that much better. You know, without having those experience, if you're winning all the time, it's not, you don't even, you don't even get all the goodness of experiencing a win. Well, I would ask this, where does your work ethic come from? How do you know how hard to work? To me, you're based that off not wanting to lose and feeling losing, right? Experiencing losing, being like, oh, if I'd have done more of this, more of that, I might not have lost. So now I work harder. You see this all the time, these success stories, these instant overnight success stories. You know, the, the, the star athletes, there's just so much more talented than everybody else. And mediocre, media, media, how do you say that? Like Mediocrity. A no, not mediocre. Meteoric rise mm-hmm. to the top. But then all of a sudden his peers catch him because their work ethic starts to negate some of his talent because he doesn't work hard. Mm. You, you know, and that, I think that is why as parents, when we don't let kids lose, we're undermining some of that work ethic. When we make excuses, it takes away the lessons they're supposed to be learned. And, and that's – I played team sports my whole life mm-hmm. until an adult. I didn't start <clears throat> jiu-jitsu and wrestling and stuff until I was in my 30s. Up till then, I played baseball, basketball, football. And, and it's, it's a lot easier to kind of get hidden in the cause of why you lost when there's 11 of you or 9 of you. Right. Um, but watching Trey, you know, and then competing myself in, in MMA and grappling and stuff – I learned so much more losing there. And, and a lot of it is just that fact of you know why you lost. There's very few times that you lose and you're like, I have no idea what happened. Yeah. You know. You know if you cheated something. You know if you didn't do what you were supposed to. You knew if your mind was right or if you were thinking about what you are going to do next already. You know. And, and those are important processes because that mirrors life. Like, and work, we work in teams a lot, but there's a lot of life that's individual. Mm-hmm. Your boss is counting on you to make sales. You either make them or you don't. You're, you know, you're supposed to have this project done. You either do or you don't. And learning how to process information, come up short, handle it, handle the emotions of losing is a critical skill that you're going to have to have as an adult as well. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, losing is awful. Losing. I hate losing. But you're right. It's because of not wanting to lose that really pushes me harder. Like I, I feel, for example, in, in MMA world or in jiu-jitsu world, <clears throat> the times that I have lost are always the times where I really go back into the drawing board. And, and those are the only matches I watch. Yeah. I have actually 
In my jiu-jitsu career, all my tournaments, I have all of them filmed. Yeah. I have never watched one of my winning matches. What do you need to watch? Only my losing ones. Right. I've only watched my losing yeah. ones a bunch of times. And I've, I've actually never reflected on that until just now. That's interesting. But it's because I don't want it to happen again. Because why? Because I hate it. The it doesn't feeling, feel good. It hurts. Yet we try to protect people from having to feel the pain of the hurt when you need to feel it. Because just like you said earlier, if I don't experience how bad losing sucks, how do I frame how great winning feels? You, you know, and, and there's this, I forget, I think it was Kobe Bryant that says he hated losing more than he loved winning, which is why he worked so hard. Mm. And, and I think that's truly why losing is important because it frames your work ethic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's... First of all, you have to be brave enough to put yourself in a situation yep. where you could lose. Which, yeah, absolutely. Competing. I mean, competing, competition, that's that's when you really have to show up. That's when you you have no choice but to face your fears, but to overcome, but to have a result, and that's winning or losing. And I think to... In, like you're saying, parents, you know, we, we try to shelter them. Everyone gets participation trophies and all these things. I think losing builds character. <clears throat> if you know how to handle it. Mm-hmm. it but it will also expose selfishness. It will expose lack of preparation. It will expose uh, blaming tendencies. It will expose some negative to you as well because it's adversity. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, think about it. What if, it, if you boil down losing to what it is, it's adversity. Mm-hmm. And it's showing who you are and how do you handle adversity. Do you blame everybody else? Is nothing ever your fault? Well, that's, th- that's not good. Mm-hmm. But if we don't let people lose, how do you know? Yeah. Right. So how, how do you know what their tendency is going to be? Because everybody's happy when you win. Mm-hmm. But think about like the best teams. When do the best sports teams fall apart? When they start to lose a little bit, and then they start pointing fingers. And I say, you know, you got to trade a couple people because you got exposed. Yeah, you were a great player when we were winning, but you're an asshole in relationships and adversity. Mm-hmm. Dude, so I have, I feel bad when I see some of these MMA guys, these amateur guys going out there 0 and 3, 0 and 4, you know, because something like MMA is it, such a, you know, it takes a lot. It, it, it takes yeah. a lot to really train, to go out there, to prepare for a fight. And, and this is just kind of a random thing that popped into my head. But when do you think when do you think it's time to maybe be like, maybe this isn't my thing? Well, you know I think I mean? you, it goes back to another episode, your circle. Okay. And here's what I think. When I see a guy that's 0-3 or 0-4 mm-hmm. in MMA, I look at how he's training. Mm-hmm. Okay, are you 0-4 and you're training the exact same way? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're still training on your own with your two buddies. Um, you, you're not in shape. You don't look ripped for your weight class. Well, clearly you're losing and continuing the pattern that created losing. Mm-hmm. So you're literally just hoping if you continue to show up, at some point you'll get lucky and get a win. You're not changing. You know what I mean? So I don't feel bad for them. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're not learning, that somebody needs to pull them aside and go, hey, dude, you're on four. That means you've lost four times. Mm-hmm. Have you done the same thing all four times? Then you're, you're missing why you lost. You, you need to make changes. You need to make adjustments. Because that's, that's the difference between losing occasionally and having losing be a pattern. Mm-hmm. Right? If we lose with a pattern, it's usually because we're not changing. We're not making the adaptions to give ourselves opportunities to win. Yeah. When you lose, you got to adjust, right? Or, but, but I think you go back, and I think if you look at that person that's lost repeatedly in sequence in the same activities, there's going to be a general theme is they're not owning the process. There are, you know, maybe somebody got lucky, oh, this happened, that happened. There's going to be a lot of blaming because if – and I'm not saying you can't be 0-4. We're going to lose. But I should not look the exact same from 0-1 to 0-4. There should be changes in me. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I'm dabbling with the process to see what improvement gets me to victory. 
Mm -hmm. And that's why I see, especially on lower level MMA, you see a kid out of a garbage gym or, or just training on his own. And he's coming in against somebody from a high level school that has multiple coaches and tons of training partners. And you're like, dude, you live 20 minutes from the gym. Some of these kids, this kid you're fighting drove an hour from Wyoming to train with us. You're 20 minutes. Why didn't you drive? Lack of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's important. But I think, I think what's imp uh, the thing I want to talk about is outside of MMA, where else do people compete in life? And why do we try to avoid competing because we're <clears throat> afraid of losing? <clears throat> Man, honestly, after after school, even so, even after high school, most athletes, a high percentage of high school athletes, don't play in Never college, yep. right? Then, when you're in college, you really it's it's not nearly as much competition as you had in high school. Even in the grades, yeah, you have you want to finish kind of higher in the class or whatever. But most universities have so so much where there's not. Yeah, there's a little bit of competition. Maybe you join an organization, fraternity, or whatever. But after after college, I feel like there's really hardly any competition, you know, winning or losing in the workplace. At least in my experience, in the corporate world, maybe maybe if you're in the sales game, right, you have you have the charts, but it's not really it's not really winning or losing. You know, you have the person who who did the bet or got the most sales that month or something like that employee of the month. But I think that there is very, very few opportunities that are built in our societal structure for post-schooling that, that are, that are competitive. What do you think? I don't know. I'm torn on that because I agree. I, I guess here, here's why I look at that. Growing up until you reach a certain age, your competitive nature is usually external, right? There's a sport, there's a club, there, there's something that you join to get that out. As adults, yeah, you usually have to seek out the external piece, mm -hmm. right? The, the marathons, the triathlons, the rock climbing, the wrestling, whatever it is, you have to seek it. You no longer have to do it. It's not part of your, you know, being a kid growing up, you kind of have to do certain things. Mm -hmm. But I, I think... You, we still compete in the workplace. Mm -hmm. I think we compete for life. You know, I think if we go back and look at like our animal side, if we were a pride of lions, all the guys would be competing for the attention of the females because you need to mate to, to continue your gene line. I don't think we're much different than that. I, I think we compete as adults, right? Like you get dressed up and you, you dress to the T. Why? Because you want people to know you value yourself. You, you want people to know, like, hey, if you come talk to me, like, I'm going to be at this certain level of preparation. It's kind of a competition. Whereas if I show up all the time and nothing against it, but if I'm in pajama pants and house sweaters and T-shirt running my errands, well, I'm not even in the realm to compete with you. Right? Like, our preparation looks different. So I, I think a lot of times people will still, even as adults, focus on – shying away from a competition, mm -hmm. right? And I've seen this a lot. Like, you have meetings. You have workplace meetings. And I know Susie over here is super talented, super creative, but she won't speak up and give her ideas in front of the team. Mm -hmm. Why? She's afraid of her idea being rejected. She's afraid of being embarrassed. She's afraid, right? So she's not even competing within the team. She's not even, like, she's so afraid of that stuff that she's not showing up. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you see that a lot in life where people just kind of quit competing in life. Right. They are afraid to lose, so they don't even try, right? And what it, we get comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and I think one of the – I just had this talk at the gym the other day. Uh, you know, a mom was talking to me like, oh, my son, he, my son's afraid of this. He's kind of afraid of that. And I was like, okay, well, what do you do to model handling fear? What do you do to show them how to lose? Wow, well, I was like, do an activity with them. Mm -hmm. Lose in front of your kids. One of the greatest things I ever did was losing my last MMA fight in front of my kids, in front of thousands of people. 
because I literally got to show them how do you lose and come back. Losing isn't a death sentence, right? Because we have this idea that if you lose and you lose publicly, you'll never be the same. And the reality is you'll be better yeah. if you own the process of losing, if you choose to bounce back. But I see so many adults, and not just in MMA, I'm talking about life, where they are afraid of losing that they don't pursue a dream. They don't pursue becoming any better. They get to a certain level, and they just kind of status quo forever. Right. And I think a lot of that is they don't want to lose. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But here's the reality. You need to lose. We need to lose as adults. How do I know if what I'm doing is working if I don't ever pump myself out there and fail? Yeah, we need to compete. Dude, we're humans. We're supposed to compete. We're not supposed to sit back on, and especially like you hit your 30s, and that's the peak because you're no longer challenging yourself. You're not taking on new hobbies. You're not having new goals. You're not trying new things you got 60 years left and that like you the best year's already done like i refuse to to believe that i hate that man i refuse that so much even me like i'm not even 30 yet and i have i have friends of mine oh like my best shape in my life was like in high school like but i'm like dude fuck that i'm but you own it now right right you own it but just get out there Mm -hmm. you know like we and it's it's not that hard and if you lose the reality is most people won't even notice Mm mm-hmm but we're so worried about everybody else thinking that we're a loser, that we failed, that we lost, we come up short. The reality is they're so afraid of losing themselves. They're not really paying attention if you won or lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. But we put so much pressure on it, you know? And, right. and it's uh, and, and this week is, is interesting for us in our house because it's Trey's senior year. He's progressively gone further in the state tournament every year. He's one of the top four, you know, like he's got a shot. But like I told him last night, dude, there's 16 kids that all think they have a shot. They've all won to get here. Only one goes undefeated. Mm-hmm. That means 15 other kids will be separated on how they handle losing, which I would argue is life. We don't know anybody that's undefeated. Your most successful entrepreneurs, your most successful businessmen, your most successful whatever have stumbled on their way there. And when they stumbled, there was a crowd of people that stumbled with them. The difference on why did they elevate is they adapted. They learned and moved on. Where a lot of people just allow that loss to define them. They never come back. Yeah. And you'll see with a lot of these major success stories, it's through those big losses that the new insights come, that the new ideas come. The experience. Mm -hmm. Your experience is gained when you lose. But we're so... We're so afraid of that feeling, that emptiness inside that you lost, that pain that we want to run from at all cost. And I disagree 100% when Trey loses, you know, because he's a wrestler, so he loses very publicly. I don't tell him to quit crying. I don't tell him to shake it off, you'll be all right. No, I want, like, do sit with that for a minute. That should hurt. Mm-hmm. Like, you just lost. That hurts, bro. Sit with, like, in, Feel it and, like, get it all in you. Take a few minutes and then let's bounce back, mm-hmm. right? Because running from that pain just sets up bad habits that hold, stay with you for life. And what it ends up creating is people that are afraid to take risks, that are afraid to live their lives, that are afraid to do anything where they might feel the pain of losing because they've been taught their whole life to hide from it. And the reality is, no, embrace it, lose. Feel the emptiness, feel the pain. And then get back up, make some adjustments, and go again. Yeah. And we all want to be competing in some way. I mean, think about how, so if we go back to, and and you're right, in the corporate world, in the real world, everything is a competition. You're competing with the person for the job. You're competing, but we don't lay it out that way. If If you get the job, you don't get a gold medal, right? There's not a winner or loser. We don't, we don't frame things in a competitive state, but in reality, it is. There's pay. There's pay, right. Who's, pay is who's your gold medal. Paid more? Who, who are my competitors, right? I'm competing against competitors every day for who's shelf space, yep. right, for who's going to be carrying our products, carrying our brand. So we are competing every day, but I think here's, here's one thing that proves we all crave competition. Look at the multi-billion dollar sports market. People, 
associate themselves to a team, right? They externalize the competing. Oh, pe- even say we won, we lost. People associate themselves with the team yeah. so deeply and, and, and then have their bragging right. rights, right? But guess what? There's way less risk oh, yeah. when you were, when you were outsourcing your competition. Exactly, yeah. right? Oh, oh, that's my team. That's who I'm about. We won, we lost. That's where most of society, at least in my experience, that's the most that where I, I hear competition being talked about. I mean, even some of my, my closer friends. But we're not really, you're, they're not really competing. They're watching other people compete and living through it. Right. And, and, and to me, that's, that's not what you're put here for. No. You're not put here to watch other people live their lives and you sit on the sideline watching and rooting for them. And, and you know, some listeners may disagree with this, but you will never – ever see me or my kids at least if I buy them stuff wearing a jersey with another person's name on the back ever I think that's that's driven me nuts my whole life really why shouldn't it be my name on the back yeah why would why would I just you know what I mean like I I I appreciate looking up to athletes right but I'm never gonna put a jersey on especially as a grown adult and have Brady on the back I'm not Brady Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I refuse to think that I can't compete there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I would never – to me, that just kind of creates that mind, like, oh, the guy's name on your back is so much up here. Right? No, man, you're up there. Mm-hmm. You just got to get yourself there. I like that. I like that. Yeah, it's – but that's what we do, man. That's what we do. Th- there's so many people who that is the only place in their world where – they, quote unquote, they are competing. We win, we lost. You know, I think about that when I have conversations with people and and sports is a huge topic. Yeah. You know, people talk about sports all the time. Who's your team? And that that is the area where I hear most people talking about winning and losing. It's not really in life. No. I feel that in in the real world, in the corporate world, when you're an adult and you have a job, a nine to five even as a business owner, even in the entrepreneur world, the word win and lose is not used as much as it is when you were in competitive sports. Yeah, I think, but we've programmed ourselves that way right. because winning and losing means somebody won and somebody lost. And we don't want to hurt feelings and we don't want to have to go to HR classes to create an inclusive environment where nobody loses. Mm-hmm. But we're all competing, right? Like, think about it. You and I go to work, and, and maybe we don't compete head-to-head at work, right? Maybe we have jobs that are next to each other but different. But every day at lunch, you bring a salad, and you bring some protein, and you bring a nice, healthy, balanced meal, and I go to fast food. I just lost a competition. <laughs> After work's over, you go to the gym. I go to happy hour. I lost the competition, right? Because we're competing in life. And, and doing the things that you know you're supposed to do is a competition with yourself, right? And I think that kind of goes back to what you said. When, when you're a kid and you're growing up through school, there's all these activities around you that, that you take part in to get you to compete. As adults, generally the biggest competition you'll have is with yourself, Mm-hmm. Are you competing with yourself to put yourself in the best situation to succeed or are you dialing it back and you're so afraid, oh, I'm afraid of you know, going to the gym the first time because I let myself get out of shape. I'm afraid of what people will say. I'm afraid of eating a salad instead of a cheeseburger. Right? I'm, I, I, you're competing with yourself. That's, that's the main competition. It the, always the, is. The competing with yourself because in every instance, every single day, you're either going to win or lose with if you did what you set out to do. I yes. mean, we give, we give ourselves so many options. If you say, if you make the plan, I'm going to go and do the, I'm going to go and work out today or I'm going to eat a, a healthy lunch, yeah. whatever it is. It's a win or a loss, whether or not you did it. And that's Absolutely. every single day for every single intention that you have. And there's a quote out there that says, the, the most basic lesson and most important lesson in life is to do what we say we're going to do. However, most of us don't learn that until the end of our life. Yeah. Right? And no one's telling us to say what we say we're going to do. But having integrity is one of those things that 
we we relax on what we relax with with losing it yeah. essentially is losing we accept letting ourselves down we do we do and that's why it's so important to have things like accountability groups and and people you know your circle of five who will keep you accountable because we let ourselves down before we let others down that's Absolutely. why these single sports are really hard you know because there's no one else to blame no you can't blame the kid for missing the block as to why you lost the game Exactly. It's all on you. Let me it, ask you it, this. But it's crazy. Adult life is single sports. It Adult is. life is one-on-one competition. Well, sometimes. I mean, you can, hi- you can be part of a team. And you can hide. But for the most part, even within that team, either you're stepping up and competing or you're kind of sitting back and supporting. Right. You know? But if, 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 you're, if you're the type of person who hides, they'll always find a place. You know, that they'll, they'll always... Easy. They'll always find the easy route. I mean, that's that's how we're conditioned as as humans is to is to look for the easiest. We have to we have to seek it out. We have to right. seek out that greatness, those challenges. Let me ask you this, Jared. What do you say to the to the people that say, "Well, it's not a competition." You I know, it's not a competition. Do like you know, live your life. Do things aren't a competition. They're, they're lying. Everything's a competition. Right? <laughs> Why do we have board games? You don't play board <laughs> games to lose. Why do we have, you know what I mean? Like what we, everything in life is a competition. Now it can be healthy competition or unhealthy competition. Okay. Right. Like healthy competition is I'm going to try to be the best I can be. And then I'm, I, I acknowledge there's room for you to be with me. Right. And, and, and I put myself around people that want to be the best and, and, and we all move towards it. Now, on some days, you're going to be a little better than me at something. On other days, I might be a little better than you. But, but overall, we're all progressing. Mm-hmm. Unhealthy competition is, to me, when, when I'm so competitive that I feel the need to put everybody else down around me. Like Winning and being right is so important that nobody else has a voice, that, that I don't f- help foster your dreams or goals and come alongside of you, but I'm trying to stomp you down to get mine up. Mm-hmm. And, and I think... Those people are pretty obvious, though, mm-hmm. the people that do that. And, and I, I'm not going to spend much time with them. Um, but we're ultra competitive. You and I are both ultra competitive. But, like, this works because both of us are coming together to use our competitiveness to push each other forward. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, we're competing together. Yeah, but even within <clears throat> this, we compete solo, right? Like, I have my business. You have your business. Mm-hmm. If you don't compete on your business, you probably don't show up the same here. Mm-hmm. Same for me, right? Like, it, it fosters it. And that's, um, even as individuals, when you are competing and when you're accepting that you're going to stumble every now and then, you're going to lose every now and then, you're going to pick yourself back up. It, it's just like dreaming, man. When I, when I do something crazy and take a risk and stumble, it empowers you to be like, ah, shit, maybe I should try something. Right. You, you know, like, and, and and vice versa. You yeah, know, you do something. I'm like, okay, man, I got to push my comfort. I always take a piano. Oh shit, I got. I, what am I supposed? I got to be learning something. I should, oh, I should learn a language. Mm-hmm. Right. We're competitive, but I'm not competitive that I have to win at all costs against you because I realize I'm competing with myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in life, that's truly where you're competing is with yourself. Are you making yourself better every day? Mm-hmm. Or are you helping make those around you better every day? Or are you so afraid of losing? So afraid of failing, so afraid of coming up short that that you're on autopilot. Right, and so many of so many of us are afraid to put ourselves in situations where we can lose, for for a variety of reasons, right? Yeah. Fear, judgment. Uh, but I think I think a a big piece of it too is just lack of experience. Not everybody was an athlete. Not everybody played sports growing up. Yeah. Not everyone had siblings where they were constantly competing. You know, so I think it's... But, a, but everybody's lost, dude. Everybody's lost, but I that, think it's... That girl that you really liked that turned you down, mm-hmm. a loss. Right. Um, trying out for the spring play, didn't get the role, loss. Right. Uh, took a advanced class in school, failed it, loss. You know what I mean? Like, we all have losses. You, you, now, the physical ones... Sports give you physical pain. Like, there's a physical stimulus to your loss. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I got pinned. I didn't like my arm being turned behind my head. Like, I got to figure out how to get my elbow in, whatever. Mm-hmm. But everybody loses. Right. But we don't practice handling the losses. We want to insulate from it. We want to 
which is normal, right? Like you want to protect your kids from feeling certain things, but I'm telling you, man, they got to feel losses. That's the point that I'm trying to make is practicing the losses is we need more opportunities to where we can win or lose and experiencing that because when you, when you lose the more, the more you lose, the better you're going to be at it. Right. Uh, Like like you were just telling me about how, uh, how Trey, um, threw away his, his second place ribbon. Right. And, and I'd like to think, you know, being 10 years a senior that I have uh, <laughs> a, 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 that I handle my stuff a, a little bit better. But my last uh, jujitsu tournament loss, I threw away my second place medal as well. Right. You know, and that that was because it was the you were there. Yeah. The, there was confusion. I had beat the guy and then we somehow the bracket I had to go against him again and and lost that time. But I threw that away. And it, it just still goes to show that no matter how much experience you have, like it's always hard. Yeah. It's always tough to lose. But I think especially in athletics, because because like you said, everyone's going to have that person that had a crush on that turned them down. Everyone's going to have those experiences. But especially if you're an athlete or it, just a competitor, if you're in speech, you know, if you're in band, Anything. if you're competing, competing, if you're putting yourselves in situations where you can win or lose, you're going to grow. Yeah. You're going to grow whether you win or lose. And I think that's what so many of us, especially after school, we just stop competing. We just coast. We even say things like, oh, it's not a competition. Oh, we're, you know, there, there's no competition in the workplace. But if we can if we can consistently frame things and, hey, I'm competing, even, even your day, if you look at yourself, start at the first thing in the morning when your alarm goes off. Think it as a win or a lose. Did you hit snooze? You lost. You took an L. Did you pop right up and start the yeah. day? Hey, that's a win. If yeah, we can absolutely. start framing things more that, hey, it's a, it's a mini competition here, competing every day against yourself, you're going to grow. Competition fosters growth. Competition brings out the best in us. Right, 100%. And it's, uh, you, you know, as a parent, I want Trey, I want, all, I want everybody to lose. But now, so like to finish your story, yeah, he threw his ribbon away. He doesn't like second. Second wasn't his goal. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with seeing him up there not happy, knowing that he could have, if he does one or two things differently, he's in first place instead of second. Mm-hmm. But at the same point, at the same time, my life experience says, hey, okay, get his ribbon. We'll secure it. At some point, after the sting of the loss goes away, we'll look back fondly at, hey, Remember when you lost and you threw a ribbon away and coach got it out of trash and gave it? Here's your ribbon, dude. And then I'll have a memory, mm-hmm. right? Um, but in the moment, it's okay to let losses sting. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, is Trey's wrestling career, he lost far more matches as a little kid than he ever won. Mm-hmm. And it was fun to – not fun to watch at the time because you're like, you're like damn, man, when's this going to pay off for him? Should he try a new sport? Is this ever going to – is this ever going to be what he thinks it's going to be? But at the same time, we had a bunch of other little kids that were undefeated, national champions. Nobody could touch them. And they had so much success so early that all of a sudden when puberty hits and other boys start getting bigger and everybody starts catching up, they don't handle adversity well because they haven't faced it. Yeah. Whereas Trey had been through losses, felt the sting over and over, and kept coming back, making changes, kept coming back, trying again, losing again, kept coming back. And now a lot of those kids that were the national champs and the, the greatest wrestlers ever when he was a little kid don't even wrestle in high school because they never learned how to handle all the adversity of losing. Mm-hmm. Whereas Trey is just now getting to be where he's really good, and I firmly believe it's because he handled not being good so long but he kept tweaking, 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 tweaking. Now he's finally seeing the, the result rewards yeah. pay off. And I think that's a lesson in life. Like we, for all of us, we have these dreams, we have these goals. And maybe the first time we try it, we fall short and we quit. You know, like this podcast is an example. Our first episode, when we go back and listen now, we're like, oh my God, that was terrible. <laughs> right? Like the On Perot's podcast. <laughs> and, you know, we, we didn't have many listeners. We didn't have many people. Yet we didn't go, okay, this didn't work first time. We're quitting. We're like, okay, what do we got? Okay, let's change this. Let's change that. We made changes in staff. We upgraded equipment. Boom, boom, boom. Now, 50 episodes in, which you could say is 50 losses. Like I would say none of these have been the ultimate success yet. Mm-hmm. 
None of these have gone viral. We're not on Joe Rogan's level yet. Mm-hmm. Some episodes had higher numbers. Some had less. Okay, what happened? Why did we? Oh, yeah, let's tweak this. Let's do this. Many people would see that as a loss, right? Like I didn't become, it didn't happen so fast, so now I'm going to pull back consistently. Now here we are at 50, and we're finally starting to hit our stride. And I think when we're at 100, we'll probably look back at 50 and go, oh, we were terrible at 50. Mm-hmm. Because we're not afraid to lose. Yeah. And one of the best things I, I think I've passed on to my kids is don't be afraid to lose. Let's go try some stuff. And if you lose, it's going to hurt. You know, it might be physical pain. It's going to be emotional pain. But guess what? You're not going to die from losing. Right. You'll be fine. Matter of fact, you're going to be better. Exactly. Because you're going to apply a lesson to it. It's a good lesson. So for you, and I think you, you may have touched on it, but what would you say was the was the best loss? Yeah, the MMA fight, for MMA sure. Fight. Oh, man, hands down. What you took from that? Yeah, hands down. I mean, I didn't, didn't remember it, so it didn't physically <laughs> hurt. Um, but, yeah, just seeing my wife crying and and – Knowing that, like, so many people came to support me and and I let them down, right? I mean, that's ultimately why sometimes we're afraid to lose. We're afraid to let other people down, not ourselves. But I, I know, like, there was a whole lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that played into to that fight. And uh, it is what it is, man. I wouldn't change, lose. I would give up all three wins to keep the loss. Like, I learned so much more about losing. And we created so much more community because everybody law, everybody loses, but not everybody loses publicly where people can watch how do you come back. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the greatest thing I was able to do. It's interesting that you say that, that I let them down because I would bet you every single person that came to watch you probably wouldn't, wouldn't say Jared let me down. Sure. You know, kind of like you were saying earlier, I think that when we put ourselves in that position to lose and <laughs> – it actually happens, depending on how you handle yourself, yeah. that people even have more. I 100% respect agree. 100%. For us. Yeah, and I would say that's the case in this. Like, I, in the moment, I felt like I let everybody down. Mm-hmm. However, now, I don't know, what is it, three years later, I know that most of them are still with me because they got to see me handle losing. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Not, nobody, most people won't go through life undefeated. Yeah. So it's hard. At some point, it's hard to relate to the undefeated person, but we all lose. Mm-hmm. When you see somebody lose, that's why we love the underdog story, right? The kid that comes from nowhere because we all feel like underdogs. Um, yeah, so for me, losing was huge because I did it later in life. Like I was 44 probably, so I was still like taking risk, doing things most people wouldn't do. I lost publicly, and I got to rebuild publicly. I got to share with my family and everybody that watches me, how do you handle losing? It hurts. It doesn't feel good. It's not fun. It's not supposed to be fun. But it's not fatal. Mm-hmm. And now, okay, what do you do? You come back. Yeah. Think about yeah, every – we love comeback stories. Oh, yeah. But a comeback story can't happen without a falter. So why are we afraid to – we're so afraid to falter in our own lives that we don't allow ourselves to have that comeback story. Mm-hmm. So instead, we'll pay money to watch the comeback story of somebody else's life on the big screen. We'll buy shirts with somebody's name on the back and watch their comeback story on TV every weekend. But what about ours? Mm-hmm. Why is ours so less important that we don't ever even chase it? And that's what I want people to listen out of this episode, man, is your story deserves to be told. Your life deserves to be lived but you got to be af- okay with losing. You, you can't have a comeback in your life without a loss. And I guarantee many people have already lost and they're dwelling on that loss and they've not come forward. Yeah, losses can cripple people. It'll paralyze you yeah. if you let it. Mm-hmm. And I think it goes back to experience loss and what do we deal with it and why losing is important. Do you think that's why we try and – dismiss the pain and, and care for people when they lost like yeah. oh man like you know you, maybe you you just lost and like oh man like that that ref was crazy oh, dude, it's all the time. To, to where we try and we try and soften the blows yeah. of a loss yeah it's is, awful is is it because i mean why do you think we do that as, i as, think just because we're compassionate yeah and having, we know that losing compassion. sucks mm-hmm. so we're like i hey, do it's not that big a deal but i think as a coach mm-hmm. one of the worst things you can do is say hey 
dude, that's not such a big deal. It wasn't your fault. It's the ref's fault. It's the other kid's fault. It's the coach's fault. It's the, no, dude, like, hey, like, I mean, this is what I do. You know, people I coach, they lose. I'll give them a hug, say, hey, dude, I still love you, man. Take a few minutes, and we'll talk. Mm-hmm. Let them sit with losing for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let them just sit with it. And then when you can talk, but when we talk, we're not going to make excuses and blame everybody else. We, we have to own losing. Something we did or didn't do put us in that position. Now, how do we fix it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, and I think the earlier we let people know that losing is okay, you're not going to like it, it's going to hurt, but you're going to bounce back. Now, how do you bounce back? We start giving them the tools to handle it, the better they're going to be at doing it in adult life. Just got to get out there and compete first. We just got to choose to get, get in, in the, the game. game. Yeah, we got to <laughs> choose it, man. Yeah. You know, like, as adults, your game's not over. And if you're still sitting dwelling on a loss of a relationship, a loss of a job, a loss of this or that that happened 20 years ago, the reality is you're not even in the game anymore. You're not competing with other people because you're so focused on what already happened that you're not living where where things can go. And that's not what you're put here for. We're not here to have just one mistake, one decision, one loss in the first quarter of our life to find the last three quarters. Like you still have the opportunity to get back in the game, to have your comeback story if you get up and get going. Yeah. Here to win. Here to win. But sometimes the path to victory takes some losses it needs on the to. journey. It absolutely has to. Yeah. No, nobody cheers for an undefeated team. Think about it, like when a team's undefeated, almost everybody will cheer for the, the other underdog. team. Yeah, everyone wants an underdog. Yeah, so mm-hmm. embrace your underdog life. Yeah. Be the underdog. But get up and, and compete. And don't be so afraid of losing that you don't even try anymore. Love it. Cool. We ready for some purposeful practice? Yeah, let's give them some practice. I'll Man, I'm, I'm excited on this one. I, 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 need, to, I need to dig deep and, and s- do this practice myself, see what's going to come up. So first part of the practice is, are you avoiding situations in your life because you are afraid to lose? Nothing comes to mind for me right now, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig deep on this one. <laughs> part two what is your greatest loss and what did you learn from it part three are you leading people around you to avoid losing situations or to become resilient after a loss and then most importantly this is what gets you in the game email your practice to on at gmail.com yeah, oh i like that how you tied that in because that's true like i know a lot of listeners are out there, but when you actually submit stuff and get feedback and share that vulnerable information and start creating that bond of trust, it's competing. You're back in the game. Yep. Um, Awesome job, man. I appreciate you being here today. It's always good to spend the morning with you. Check out the new banner. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, we get more professional. And we do have a website, too. Uh, What is that, man? Actually, the onpurposepodcast.com. So if you want to go there... I think all the episodes are posted there, and they can shoot you to either iTunes or Spotify or YouTube. And uh, much respect and, and love to all you guys for being part of the On Purpose community. Remember, team, life is far too short to live any other way than On Purpose. Oh,